the excitement is just palpable. And information security professionals don't often get excited, but when you show them this, they lose their minds, uh, frankly. Patrick O'Reilly, founder and CIO of CyberSaint. Welcome to Powered by Snowflake. Thanks, it's great to be here. I'm really happy to learn more about CyberSaint. So what is CyberSaint? Well, thanks for asking. Mm -hmm. uh, CyberSaint is a software as a solution uh, hosted in the cloud. Uh, we are in cyber risk management, basically. Cyber risk management. Mm -hmm. And you are the founder and CIO. How, what does that mean? What it means is I started the company about seven and a half years ago with a couple of people, and uh, I stayed the longest. For years, I shepherded the solution. Uh, and as we grew, I stepped into more of an R&D role. Uh, so now I'm the chief of innovation. Uh -huh. And how does CyberSaint help their customers? CyberSaint helps customers understand what their real exposures are. Uh, we use data. Uh, it's a data-driven approach. And we benchmark on best practices across the industry. And we're very transparent. Mm -hmm. And we're not hard to implement. Historically, in our space, most of the solutions are very difficult to implement. Mm -hmm. I like data and I like ease of use. Yes. And you have a demo for us today. What is that demo about? The demo will just show quickly how we take data and get it into a risk register very quickly so that companies can understand what their exposures are and begin to socialize remediations or mitigations to senior executives. Mm -hmm. So understanding exposure and showing this to senior executives so we can make good decisions. That's right. So can we see a demo? Sure, absolutely. But let me start with this diagram first, just to explain how we work with Snowflake. Excellent. So what we do is fairly simple. Leveraging the power of Snowflake uh, has helped us solve some really serious problems. Uh, historically, companies don't always understand their posture. Uh, they don't understand it in relation to controls. So what we help them do is actually pull in telemetry, put it into the appropriate source, and then get it onto the controls and understand their risk. So how we use Snowflake is sometimes if a company has a lot of telemetry or telematic sources, they put it into your tables, we structure it, we normalize it, and then we get it under control. So we query it. We don't store it ourselves. We use you guys to actually store the data. And then we benchmark it against any number of standards, a cybersecurity framework, NIST 853, special publication Rev 5, ISO, the list goes on and on. The beauty of it is companies immediately get a sense of what their technical implementations look like. This is historically brand new because generally what happens is you would send in assessors or consultants. They would come in and do the work themselves, and you would have very little visibility into what was going on down at the level of the machine and the software. So this is really a brilliant partnership that allows us to get very granular on cyber risk management. <laughs> so adding visibility to the whole process. Absolutely. And understanding what cyber risk means and all the standards that we could apply to any situation. Absolutely. And not only that, but risk assessment has historically kind of languished uh, in six or 12 month intervals. So risk assessments were not frequently fresh. This allows us to completely reinvent the cyber risk assessment and do it in real time. Well, being there in real time can make a huge difference. The advanced persistent threat lives in real time. For sure. Yeah. That sounds great. Now I would really like to see this in action. No, my pleasure, yes. So right here, as you can see, we are on the executive dashboard. Uh, this exists uh, to take the data on cyber loss, put it in the hands of information security professionals, and allow them to sort of benchmark themselves against what's happened historically. Also, on the right, to model future cyber losses in terms of scenarios. They can then take their programs, uh, propose remediation projects, and then have that data in return on security investment form so that they can make an argument around what they'd like to do to buy down risk. But let me talk a little bit first as well about the actual data that we get from Snowflake and put across these frameworks. So the brilliance of this is that Historically, what's been done, and it's, it's a sort of broken process, is to go out to numerous APIs, try to authenticate, and then get data from all of these disparate sources, mix it up, and then do the benchmarking. Turns out it's not so easy to do, but it's very easy to do with Snowflake. So I'm going to click into an assessment here that's on the cybersecurity framework. You can see right here 
that we've got a bucket chart driving some metrics on the CSF. But the wonderful thing about this is that this data is actually coming from security data on the data lake inside Snowflake. That's brand new. Every time I show one of, the, one of these demos to a customer after we've actually you know, lit up this data, the excitement is just palpable. And information security professionals don't often get excited. But when you show them this, they lose their minds, uh, frankly. So I'm going to go into the controls. Now, these controls historically have been done manually. Assessors go in and ask some questions, maybe pull IT into the room, sit down, and it's time consuming. I mean, very time consuming. But if you have security engineers and devs, they can get that data into table form. Uh, we can help them normalize it. And I'll just give you an example of what happens here. We're going in and taking a look at a particular control here, at the CCA results. This is all being pulled in by Snowflake. Uh, all of these checks. We've had checks north of 10 million checks on a single assessment. It's really an unprecedented use of data. And it's a thing of beauty because then we relate it to risk. So let's just check into here. And now we can see that a current list of services and the listen state on the host. You have all of your assets here. You see that they're passing. Uh, this is all recent data. How was this done in the past? People would come in and say, do we have this? Do we have it on a sample of assets? Yes, perhaps, but you didn't see this level of granularity on the assessment. We have very flexible scoring models as well that help you to sort of take the data at scale and score it across your assessments. Uh, so when you go over into risk, now you can see we have a picture of the risk exposures your organization might be facing. You can see it in bubble chart form. The industry tends to be comfortable with heat maps. So you see heat maps as well, but this is, a, this is a next generation thing we're doing, pulling the data out of Snowflake. It's not just about heat mapping, it's about understanding loss magnitudes in dollars and cents. And one of the ways we do that is with actuarial data. So we take data sets on cyber loss, historical cyber loss, we query them over time on a rolling window, and then we allow you to drop those risks in by your sector, by your company size, by your revenue size. So that when you go into, say, access or privilege misuse uh, and you look at it, you're looking at how your performance is over time, but that data is actually coming in from all of your security products that are being aggregated in Snowflake. So you're getting risk actually adjusting in real time based on your posture. That's impressive. I'm especially surprised how at first you can show an executive overview, even putting a dollar amount on the risk. That's right. That's what executives need. Yes. But then you're covering the side of what actually, where's the data coming from? When, when you show this to customers, what they are most surprised about? I think over the last year, uh, the SEC came in and, and was pretty specific about cyber risk and companies heard that. Uh, so now it's really on record that your cyber risk posture uh, impacts your equity score. So when we show companies that have tried to, to have a cyber risk management program for years, uh, what we can do for them in a matter of seconds literally configure a risk dashboard here in a matter of seconds. If you go into the register and add risk, you can add manually or add industry risks. When you add industry risks, you're looking at the actual industry, the revenue, the company size, and you can add them. Uh, you can create a new dashboard, and I'll give you an example here. Uh, you know, we have several different risk models because we're risk model agnostic, uh, and let's say you want to benchmark it on FAIR. Uh, you have a name, you can just name it. I'm going to name this uh, Snowflake and copy a team on there and then add a dashboard. Now, when you, you have a blank dashboard here, but this is what companies who've been struggling to get a risk management program for years, if you add risk, you add industry risks, you can come in, you select your industry, you select a secondary industry, say, for example, estimated revenue. Let's just put in a lot of zeros here. And company size, uh, that's just an employee count. So, and then you here's the part where we work with, with you all. The dashboard assessment is pulling in that automated data, which when we work with the security teams inside organizations, they can put the data in Snowflake and then we can query it. So if I just copy a particular assessment, you immediately have these risks 
that we've done some statistical analysis on, and you can add them immediately. So for companies that have no risk management program, and I, and I know companies that are very large that don't have risk management programs, in a matter of seconds, they've immediately got this data. So that's really the power of it. And it's really impressive how quickly you can build this and bring this information back to executives that really need to have this. Thank you very much. And it, it helps. For sure. Yeah. And you mentioned you founded CyberSense seven years ago? About seven and a half, yeah. Yes. And how has the relationship between CyberSense and Snowflake changed throughout time? We started working with you all about two, two and a half years ago. And it was with one of your primary executives who's, who's moved on. But he had a vision that you, know, you guys could be the stewards of security data. And we just love that story. The idea that you could build a security data lake, uh, that it could be flexible, that it could take in many sources of security data, and then find value in that data. You know, there's, there's the obvious use cases of maybe dashboarding, talking internally about various things, uh, KPIs, things like that. But the cyber risk data has even more value out of telematic sources over on the risk side. And I think you know, cyber has made uh, a bit of a mess for itself in that it's got uh, a brilliant, brilliant history of solving very difficult problems, but not always unifying and translating across different business silos. So your, your executive, Omer, had this vision of the security data lake. We, we were completely on board with it, and we still believe in it very much. For sure. And Omer is not at Snowflake now, but he's still very involved in this. Yeah. And, and I keep reading his posts and he keeps he's a great guy. contributing he's, to yeah. the industry. Yeah, absolutely. So, Important. yeah, I'm glad to see how everything. Oh, we have a new curve here. Yeah. So immediately you can understand your, your loss curves. This is the FAIR model. So, you know, within a matter of seconds, you've got an aggregated risk distribution and a loss curve. You've got sort of a most likely exposure. This is annualized right away. You've got uh, all of these risks tied to actual individual assessments. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you want to buy down that risk, you just copy, you go right into the assessment. You say, well, you know, can we, can we get this control up? What do we have to do to get this control up? And it's that easy. Right. Yes, let me read this. Conflicting duties and areas of responsibility should be segregated to reduce opportunities for unauthorized or unintentional modification or misuse. So now you have a very descriptive task choice uh, assessment. Yeah. How do executives read this? They don't necessarily go down to this level, right? We want to keep uh, most executives up at this level because historically, one of the problems has been IT will walk into an executive meeting or even the CISO will walk into a meeting with the board and start talking about firewalls or various security products. And executives are like, what, what are they talking about? You know, And this has been one of the problems in cyber risk management. Governance you know, doesn't have full control of the technology. And the technology side often feels like if they're completely honest with governance, they might get killed. So now the discussion has to happen at a higher level. And that higher level is risk. That higher level is dollars and cents. And that's what this dashboard is about. That's really useful for me to how I translate my ideas. I'm an engineer. Mm -hmm. How do I translate my ideas to executives? Right. Having a product. That helps me do that translation? Oh, absolutely. And we talk to control teams everywhere across the world who are being asked what controls, which groups of controls uh, would be most uh, effective to go after to mitigate the most risk. They don't know historically, but coming in here, they can begin to see that context. That's amazing. Now, before thinking about what's in the future for CyberSaint, where is CyberSaint now? CyberSaint right now is at a very exciting sort of growth phase. Uh, with some of the changes in the industry, I think we were a little ahead of the curve for a few years. We certainly had a lot of interest and we had a great customer base, but now we're starting to see companies come in that really need uh, what we have. And the sales cycles are much shorter. We get companies up and running uh, within a, less than a week. Most of our competition takes months, if not years, to implement. So we're at a really exciting place. I think we're actually helping the industry to understand cyber risk management. Yeah, it certainly helps when it's so quick to get. That's the thing. But it, you know, here's the th it, was a, it was a bit of a slog to get this quick. You know? So it, was, it took time to get this fast. 
for sure. And where do you see, see things going now, now that you are here? Yeah, I mean, I see our partnership continuing to grow and develop and seeing the security data lake uh, as a concept grow because executives want to get value out of the data. They don't want data in all these tide pools and, and they don't want it to stagnate. They want to use it, operationalize it. And I see this now moving into AI because we've worked with AI for years. But the bigger problem now is, is how do you get information security executives, some simple answers, some optimized paths on a problem that's incredibly complex. And you need the data to do that. And uh, our next generation will really be sort of bigger models, uh, bigger models that the application talks to. And Snowflake will be a very big part of that. I love this. I love this so much, especially as an engineer that loves playing with data, that always struggles uh, bringing my ideas to executives yeah. out. Having that framework really, really helps making it easy for everyone to follow. That's really, really nice. Absolutely. And engineers are a huge part of what we do. They're central to our central to our endeavor. That's really cool. So for engineers and executives watching us, where should they go next? Uh, we'd love it if you come to our website, cybersaint.io, and you can get our contact information there. Cybersaint.io. Thank you so much. Any last words? No, Felipe, it was wonderful speaking with you. Very excited about our partnership and look forward to helping uh, everyone across all sectors with cyber risk management. Thank you, Patrick. I'm very inspired right now on how to translate data into security, into executive action. And for everyone watching us, thanks a lot. For more Snowflake developer content, go to developers.snowflake.com. And don't forget to like and subscribe.